everybody. Just getting Jeff started out here. Brother Jeff out here putting in some corn for us. We are in year four. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the musical time lapse of all of the selling of items and buying of some things that we did in January. So I'm going to give you guys, I got a couple of errands I need to run it. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you guys an update of what we've done. You saw me purchase the milk trailer and we've already taken a couple of loads of milk into town. You saw that I switched the greenhouses over to tomatoes and we got a lot of wool going on too. So that's the first thing we're actually going to do because if I look, wool usually is top price in May. It is not quite there yet, so we're but we got some other things we're going to do with the wool. And then we're going to run into town because I believe April. Yes, we have the price of our cornbread is going up right now. It's not quite to the top, but maybe by the time we get there, it'll go up a little bit more. So we're going to hook up to the trailer. And in the process of doing this, I'm going to show you some of the things that we changed. Um, you can already see there, the, the bale shed is gone. And we have replaced that with a implement shed here. We actually took out a small loan from the bank. We've been doing well enough financially that they they saw that you know we were um, eligible for loans. So we took out uh, around a hundred thousand dollar loan. Uh, put up that implement shed. Uh, you'll see in the future we're not we don't need to do bales anymore now that we have the silos. So I didn't need the bale shed anymore. Let me get this wool here loaded up real quick. You see that we have cows. So I actually bought the cows in the same episode that I was harvesting the corn and doing the silage. But apparently I didn't include that portion of the video uh, when I put everything together. And I think that's because the original um, feed feed mixer that I tried to use did not fit under the augers and so I had quite a fun time trying to get the cows fed the first time around um, so there was a couple other things that happened for whatever reason I edited that all out but here's our new implement shed also with that loan we bought a new forge uh, self-propelled fire harvester a New Holland S2200 so we'll see that in action here shortly and we have our roller in here and our disc as well. And then we got some shelving in here. We got our sprayer parked in here. The planter won't uh, fit in here, but in the future when we upgrade it, we upgrade it with a foldable one, it will. And then you can see we have our, our lime and our fertilizer and our seed and our silage additive all on the shelves there. So that's what we've done there. Also, I was able, as I had been planning to do, turn all of this out here on the edge of the farm into one large field so you can see there now it goes all the way out this is all one field but what we also did is we had uh, a local uh, construction company come out and they actually put in a culvert for us and leveled this out so we can now drive across into the other field um, so I left a small patch of alfalfa right there you can drive across this you can see there's the culvert down there in a the ditch oh. built it up pretty high so we shouldn't have too many flooding issues and then the grass field well, right now in the grass field we are seeding alfalfa over the top of that so let me see if I can get here in time to stop looks like Let's see if we can get in here in time. All right. Apparently that one's Jeff too. I don't know how Jeff's doing both things, but hey, whatever works. We uh, pull this up here. Let's see if he needs any seeds since we're sitting right here. Looks like uh, pH. I need some lime soon. Oh, he's only used 20% of his feed. He's gone through a lot of fertilizer. So, probably going to need some fertilizer here before too long, but we're not going to worry about that right now. 
All right, so yeah, so we're seeding down alfalfa over the top there because uh, we can get a higher yield, and I would just like the way the alfalfa looks better than the way I like the grass. <clears throat> now we'll head into town and show you the rest of what we've done here. said we'd have our eyes on some of these other properties surrounding the farm but um, 600,000 I think is the lowest price but with what we got going on now that should be within reach within the next year but that also means we're going to start needing some bigger equipment it's bigger fields mean bigger equipment I'm already contemplating how long it's going to take um, on that 15 row split um, split row planter to plant all of that soybeans over there but we'll see and then the other purchase we've made is we actually purchased this small field right here from one of the neighbors it currently has um, some rye growing on it so um, we may just come out here and see if we can't mow that for hay or silage at some point might you be able to use the cutter on our new forage harvester to do that uh, but then we're going to put uh, another small field of alfalfa down right there uh, we only bought 20 cows but i also bought a couple of bulls too so over time obviously our herd is going to grow so over time we're going to need more feed but right now we don't need a whole lot um, but uh, we had the vet out the other day and checked all the cows and it looks like every one of the cows is um, in their reproductive cycle so we're gonna have some calves here pretty soon they're all pregnant so gonna be growing in the herd head over the hills into town now it's a lot easier to drive on this road when there's not covered in snow I know if you guys noticed uh, I decided to just use the tractor to make all the deliveries so I didn't have to get out to pick up in the snow plow this year. It worked pretty well until I needed the, the semi to deliver some wheat and milk, but we handled it and we only had a couple incidents with the artificial intelligence cutting us off. Tipped the tractor over once, um, cut me off a couple times, and then got brake checked a couple times, but it is what it is. You would think that as much income as I'm providing to this little town would be a little bit nicer. I guess they don't like me. Turn into town here. See, just like that. They just don't know. They don't know how to stop. I know he saw me coming. Here we go. I'm just gonna drive over your hood with my trailer. Go try to tell your insurance it was my fault. We'll see who they believe. So one of the, <clears throat> you saw that we bought the dairy and uh, we delivered a load of milk and started making some butter that will allow us to make cornbread. Um, but I already made enough butter to use all the corn flour that we have for now. So there you can see, got a nice load of cornbread sitting out here ready to go. That's what we're going to work on next. And then if I go up here, I forget where the trigger is at. But um, I, I can't remember if I set the, it to keep making butter. I think I turned it off, actually, because we have enough butter for now. So I just turned it off because I realized that in the, in the interim, I can actually sell the milk. The milk sells at a higher price than the cheese or the butter that we could make with it. So when I don't need butter to make cornbread, I can just sell the milk straight to the restaurant or whoever else needs it. The other thing we did was we put in this spinnery here, so we are now turning our wool into fabric. Problem is I put it down in the winter, so I wasn't able to see the ground through the 
through the snow so I need to do some smoothing out real quick while we unload this wool. So I'm going to jump into my construction menu and do that real quick. I'm just going to go to sculpting, soften, and see if we can get rid of this hump that we created right here. Yep, looks like we're good. Just soften this area around it. And then you can see here on the other side we have some fabric being made. And so with that fabric, we are going to be able to sell it to the diner, apparently. In May is when it's going to hit its top price. It's close to it right now, but we're going to let it keep going up a little bit. The cornbread is still $200 below its top price, so I'm probably not going to go over and sell that right now. That's what I was going to do while I was in town. But we'll drive over and look at a couple of other things first. So right here on the, the front half of the building is a popcorn factory. We did not uh, purchase the popcorn production uh, yet. That is probably in future plans. But what we did purchase is here on the back side, and you can see it right there. We purchased ketchup factory and it looks like my ketchup had fun stacking itself in the snow it's all strewn about all this ketchup out here just kind of thrown out here and in, in jugs gotta love it um, let me look the ketchup's top price isn't until October and it's gonna go to the pizzeria uh, so we're probably $62,000 worth right now. I'm trying to decide if I want to go ahead and sell some off now just to give us some leeway. I think so because there's a couple of purchases we want to make. So we're going to go ahead and sell off this ketchup. Um, I have the... So one of the, one of the nice things about this is the greenhouses are set up as a production facility. So I have the... The greenhouses are now set at, um, to automatically distribute the tomatoes to the ketchup factory, so I don't have to do that myself anymore. Unfortunately, the animal uh, pens are not designed as production facilities, so I still have to hand deliver all of that stuff. I don't know why. Oh, it's still going. There it goes. Look at that, 100% full. So, in this truck can barely, whoa, it cannot handle a full load of, of tomatoes, even with that uh, seed corn in the back. So we might have to, let's do something here real quick. Let's, um, let's unstrap our seed corn real quick. This is the first time I've ever had a full load in this truck, I guess. Let's see. Nope. Does not look like our front end's gonna be on the ground yet. Let's see if I can use my this hill to my advantage and at least try to get out of the way of some of this traffic. I'm gonna have to go to town and get one of the tractors, but both of the tractors are busy right now, so. This is live, raw, uncut footage of Andrew trying to play Farming Simulator. Let's see. You're a Ford, you can do it. There we go. No, nope, trailer's stuck now. The problem is I can't reset this, um, or else I'll lose all my ketchup. So, the next best thing is cheating. All right. Let's go get the rest of our ketchup now. This might end up being kind of a herky jerky video when you guys see it because I've been having some issues today. 
like I just said, my computer's been running some updates, and so twice while I've been recording this, it has kicked me out of the game to pop up a, a C drive prompt to tell me that I need to free up some storage space. I think we get it all taken care of now. All I had to do was move some of my pre-recorded clips from other episodes to my external hard drive. Which normally I do as I record them. I have a one terabyte external hard drive that works a lot better um, than my internal hard drive on my computer. I just got a basic El Cheapo gaming computer because I didn't think I was going to get into farming simulator this seriously but I've gotten into it a lot more than I plan to. So now we're just going to make the best of the situation and Come on, pick up the ketchup. Where's my trigger at? Gonna get that one right there? Wonder if I can do this myself. One gallon of ketchup at a time. At least you guys are getting some raw, uncut footage this time. I've always joked about doing a blooper reel, because if, if, if any of you play this game in real life, you'll realize, or, you know, there's there's just a lot of stuff that goes on in this game that probably a lot of the YouTubers you follow don't show you. Apparently my corn is in the way. Now I know why the town's people don't like my driving. Because apparently I'm a nuisance too. Let's get this corn off the road. So the good people of Alma can get to their destinations. back of the pickup here. Whoa, not through the toolbox. Let's not do that. There we go. What's in your way now? Is there a bottle of ketchup up here in your way? Is this seed pallet in your way that's way off here in the ditch? The heck is going on, people? Guess it was the seed pallet the whole time. Sorry, dude. Just a fun day here. All right, let's strap you back down. And then it likes to do this. There we go. Now let's see if we can get this ketchup picked up. So you can see now that I turn the triggers back on, now there's zones where this stuff is supposed to be. I'm guessing the ketchup, like I said, had a fun time spawning in the snow since it comes up in individual bottles. Um, I might have to get me a warehouse. I don't want it right now eventually I can probably buy the pizzeria or the diner and one of them will probably use ketchup for something and then at that point I'll be able to automatically distribute like I'm doing with the tomatoes but we'll see <clears throat> surprised I haven't gotten a prompt yet to say <sighs> either dad or Jeff are out of seed I've been le letting them go for a while all right, let's just run run stop signs. That works. You about hit a pedestrian too. I know I'm. I say that as I'm going 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. All right. There we go, we'll take it. $24,000 richer. <coughs> now.
now we're going to run over to the dealership, make our next purchase, and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do next with this video. Like I said, I've had, I might cut some of this stuff out so I can add some uh, stuff from other months, but we'll see. So let's run across to the dealership. I want you guys to tag along for this. Might as well. You've seen me purchase stuff before. Actually, you know what? I think I can do this. Let me see if I can park the trailer down here and have it start loading the cornbread. There we go. And now we'll run over to the dealership. They said they were going to hold on to this for me after I demoed it. So let's go in here and get it. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go to medium tractors. We're going to go down, down, down the list. It's a ways down here. I got too many mods. One of these days I'll get rid of some of them. And we got this Deutz Alice right here. And we're going to do a turbo tuned 9190 at 250 horsepower. We're going to put some duals on there. We're going to put some carpet with a sprayer terminal and a planter terminal in there. Um. We are going to do the America edition. We're going to put some weights on the front. And we're going to make this Alice Orange. And there we go. $55,000 later. We have a new tractor. Now while I'm here, there's one thing I wanted to look at. So we're looking at getting into no-till. Uh, 21000 So I was going to look at a mulcher. Uh, we've been considering doing no-till. Um, that one's four and a half meters wide. That one's six meters wide. That one's nine meters wide for eleven thousand dollars. Similar to the roller we already have, so we probably have to change the color so we don't get confused. So eleven three. Okay, that's an option. What about disc harrows? <coughs> I think I'm just going to go with the mulcher and use that over the corn stubble. And then we'll plow over the beans. Or we can just go with, that's a 7.4 meter case, case 490, 24 foot disc. I don't know what the distant difference there for any of that stuff is. So that's 14,000 there for 7.4 meters. Or 11,000 for 9 meters. I think we're just going to go with the... We don't need it now. We'll, we'll probably make this purchase after the end of the year. I might actually end up getting both. We'll see. So tractor's been delivered. <clears throat> You'll have to stay tuned to check that out later. We're going to finish loading up the cornbread, and we'll be back. All right, I figured the easiest way to do this was just to go ahead and switch out the tractors now, and then I can <clears throat> take the 7050 back into town. I left the trailer at the cornbread because it was getting over full on me again so we are going to pull the planter behind the pickup here and if I get close enough it'll let me fill it up get rid of some of those seed bags quite a few of them actually we will drop that planter and then we're just going to move this tractor up here out of the way for a second and we're gonna go ahead and throw the 9190 on the Kinsey planter so you can hear what this thing sounds like too by the way it's a shoe free zone on this tractor just so you know and that's because I got some nice carpet in here that actually looks just like a rug I had when I was a kid, I'm not going to lie. I don't remember mine having a roundabout though, but that's because that was back in the 90s before roundabouts were a thing. I 
But with this tractor, we're officially into the 90s era, so we might be looking at getting a new pickup soon. But we're progressing through time. All right. So there we go. We're going to get the 9190 back out here, and then what we'll do is we'll run... We'll run out and grab the 7050 because it is empty. It is out of fertilizer, so we'll get that back in and get that topped off. <coughs> kind of hodgepodge on this episode, but I uh, hope I got you some worthy content that's not scaring you away from my channel too much. Actually, you know, let's go ahead and finish this end down here first. So as I went and picked up this planter, or the other tractor and planter to hook this back up, I realized that I was originally going to do this first section along this road. Like, I was just going to do like six planter widths and then skip one so I had a place to get through with the forage harvester. Uh, but that doesn't matter now because I got the self-propelled one. So I was like, oh, I didn't have to do that after all. So, but here we go. Let's see who, what name is it going to give us this time. Oh, I didn't get close enough to get in the way. Darn it. All right, well, let's get a ride over to the 7050 now. We got a decent amount of the alfalfa in over here, but there you can see it's still 75%. Uh, on the seed, but the uh, fertilizer is getting low. So we're going to run this back up here. We're going to get this switched out. We're going to put the 8070 on this uh, drill that we had to lease to put the alfalfa in. And then we'll run into town with the 7050 to deliver the cornbread once the price is to its top. And then we'll probably be back in May, June, or July, whichever month we get to that uh, it's going to be time to make some hay. Um, like I said, this little bit of a kind of poorly put together video this time. I was trying to do it like all the way through just one solid video, but like I said, my computer decided it wanted to do some other things and uh, shut off my screen recorder a couple times on me. Well, that's all right. I hope I got you some good content, and we will uh, catch you next time. Don't forget it, those three magic buttons: like, subscribe, and notifications. That's not going to be enough fertilizer, but that's all right. We're putting down alfalfa anyway. But until next time, thank you for watching. I'm going to get uh, these tractors switched out and go sell some cornbread, and probably sell some wool and fabric in May off camera. And we'll be back when it's time to start cutting some hay.